Prologue, Chapter 2, United States Grand Prix After an enjoyable debut in Russia, Malachi Wilson now has a fully functional power unit in his Haas machine. In his second race as a Formula 1 driver, our rookie has his eyes on beating his teammate Mick Schumacher, with rumours floating around the paddock that Alpha Tauri may potentially have their eyes on him. Here we are then in one of the fastest growing cities in the United States, the fabulous Austin in the great state of Texas. The circuit itself 14 miles southeast of the city center and home to the US Grand Prix since 2012. The latest in a long list of iconic tracks to have that honor. Okay, this is the team's home race. We're all relying on you to impress today. What's going on guys? Zach RC here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome along to episode number 2 of the F1 2021 F1 The Prodigy story series on the F1 2021 game playing as Malachi Wilson in the second race for his Formula 1 career, the United States Grand Prix. If you did miss the last episode, go and check out. There'll be a card in the top right now. And there have been rumours coming around the last week or so since his JB race in Russia. Have a listen for yourself. There are rumours that you're looking for a contract with another team. Is there any truth to that? Great. Well, that's everything. We're unsure as of now whether these are just rumours or not, but right now one thing is for sure is that Malachi will be wanting to focus on his driving, and that's what he'll be doing in this second race of his F1 career here at the United States Grand Prix in Austin, Texas. So no more talking, we're gonna jump right into this race as we go to five red lights now for the United States Grand Prix here in Austin. Lights out and we are underway. It's a decent getaway with Van West, found away past Giovinazzi already, but there he goes back on the right-hand side. He's got the run back. They try and go for a dive on the inside. Rosman's at the way going into turn one. We're up into P14 here. We've got Ocon on our outside. The yellow flag's out already, not sure, quite sure what that's for. But Ocon just about gets the edge on us, and that's us back down to P14, but still a positive start. We've gained two places just like that as we move through the S's for the first time. This will be perhaps the most challenging part of the Austin circuit. Russell almost hasn't got the inside. Doesn't quite get close enough to make that move. We're over the curbs a bit, so we're going to lose some more times. Ocon in front of us. We'll still be trying to close him down in the opening stages of this race. But still a very positive start, making up two places off the line. We're going to keep an eye out for Russell and Giovinazzi both behind us. Could be having a go. Down the long straight coming up after this next top after this next turn. Here we go now through the corner and coming out of it. Down onto the straight we come. Ocon, we're still trying to close him down in front of us. He's about 0.3 seconds ahead. Russell's about 0.3 behind. No slipstream, but not, not not too much slipstream for him. He hasn't got the DRS just yet. So regardless, we're still falling away from Ocon because he's too close to stroll for us to be able to do anything and get momentum from him. So we're going to stay behind the Frenchman here through the rest of the second sector we come. We're going to push to the inside, trying to find a deep, trying to find a better line, just something to run the track fast so we can try and gain some more time on the Alpine in front. So we're going a bit lower into the corner. We may run wide as a result. Go over the curb, and there we go, running wide. Ross is going to have a go around the outside, but he's unable to do anything. There he goes, though. And there we go, run the curbs a bit, and there's very close to contact. We've gone way wide there, off our usual line. We've sort of forced Russell out. No contact was made. It's all clean racing. But he's now lost up to Giovinazzi as a result. But he's got managed to get the place back just like that, and that concludes... The first lap of this United States Grand Prix. We're still chasing down Ocon. He's still got 1.2 seconds on us. So he's definitely managed to get away from us. Russell's still chasing us as we move further on now to lap 2. He's going to have a really good run at us this time. Here we come down the straight. He's going to have a good opportunity to go for a move. He's on the left-hand side. Does the Mercedes power have enough to make, to make a pass to our Haas machine? Remember, remember, we've got a full power unit in here now as opposed to the smoking hunk of garbage that was the car last time out. Of course, no offense to the Haas team. They do a great job race by race, but of course we are the, aren't the best team on the grid. Regardless, we've managed to find a way back past Russell to, oh, he might, after he managed to sneak, sneak by us there. And that's us back up into P14 for the time being, to keep our eye out for Russell behind us. He's moving on now to lap 3. This time Russell does have DRS, as does Giovinazzi, so he might have some trouble keeping those two behind us. Russell's looking to the left, and they're, sorry, to the right, and there goes Giovinazzi to the left. They're going three of rests into the left hand as Giovinazzi backs out. Russell is being forced out from so simply us trying to make that move. Giovinazzi's around the outside of still wheel to wheel with him. But we've got the inside going through these ne next couple of right handers. And we should have momentum. But there goes Giovinazzi on the inside. We've touched wheels there. We've turned in a bit too early. 
and we we're almost ran wide as a result. But Giovinazzi managed to find his way past us, and that's us down into P15. We're already losing grip in these soft tyres. Going down to turn one to try and go for a dive on Giovinazzi. Very aggressive, and we've done damage to the front winger as a result. But it's worth it at this point because we managed to find our way past Giovinazzi. But that could that, that could damage our chances later on in the race. We've still got a good 10 laps to go. Nonetheless, in the here and now, we've cut the corner slightly there. We've managed to find our way past Giovinazzi. He's trying to go up the inside. He's going to be on the outside this time. We've run way onto the curb, and that allows Giovinazzi back through the Italian up into our P14. So as we move further onto lap 5 here, he's already gained 2.2 seconds on us within the space for lap, and we're not done yet, because here comes Sebastian Vettel and the Aston Martin behind us. He's trying to challenge. I'm not quite sure what he's doing back there, but we've gone wide, and there goes Vettel up into p 15. Russell's going to have a go as well. He's trying to go, up the, go around the outside, but he's been forced away, and that puts Latifi up in 17. We're on, we're on the grass. We've just about managed to get away from them there. We're going to focus our efforts now on chasing down Sebastian Vettel as we move further on into the lap, because Latifi's going to have a run at us this time with the DRS. This could get very dicey. There he goes. He's off to the right-hand side. We've forced him away. Now he's going to the left instead. There he goes with the DRS flying past us here. We're going to try and get him back, we're going to move to, this, to his inside, we're going to switch back to the outside, try and get a run through the left hand, or try and move, use the switch back, we've made contact with Russell there, we're going to get a warning for that, but Latifi's now found his way past us, we're going to, have to try and work our way back in front of him, and that's us down into P17, not good at all here, moving further, we're still chasing the Canadian down in the Williams, of course we're, we're kind of battling Williams and the Constructors, or at least on the road for, in the way of car performance, but Regardless, we're still losing grip in those soft tyres. You can see we've run way wide there, way off the track. And that's going to allow Mick Schumacher to close in time. We've gone wide again, and there he goes. And crucially, that's our teammate, the guy we're supposed to be beating today. That was the objective you saw at the start of the race on the left-hand side of your screen. So, Lati so Sh Latifi's found way past us, as has Mick Schumacher. Set us down into P18. And crucially, we're currently failing the objective that was set for us in this chapter. So, Schumacher's... Finals we pass, we have to try and work our way back, but of course we start to think about the rain that's coming in, the, in what should be a couple of laps time. As we now find ourselves holding off Kimi Raikkonen for position, he's managed to get the switch back on us, he's found his way through. So moving, so on the start of lap 7 there, we're down into P19. The only car left in front of us, behind us is George Russell. Moving further, way further on now to lap 9, we're going to, we're going to gain some basics. People are coming in for tyre changes, but the rain is definitely closing in. I think we won't be able to start seeing the first drops this lap and this is the sign that we need to try and pit as we try and find our way past Sebastian Vettel while we, while we still can of course we have very little grip in these soft tyres we've been driving them for about nine laps or so and that could be very costly to us it's been costly to us so far we've gone wide multiple times as a result of the, of the low tyre grip you may not be able to see it because of the quality of the video but right now the rain is starting to fall so we have to think about that and definitely think about coming in for our pit stops in we come now to the pit lane we're taking a big gamble here going on to these intermediate tyres early because we've been taking a gamble for the whole race as it is staying out on these soft tyres for as long as we can but moving on to the Inters now so here we go this is big this is the huge gamble we're taking we're not going to beat Mick unless we do this we're expecting the rain to really start coming in now it's on go the intermediate tyres off come the softs and the team also choosing to change the front wing thanks to the damage we sustained earlier on the race uh, if it was me I, I would I would have stopped them from doing this but I have no control over what they choose to do to Malachi's car so here we come now out of the pits. I'm hoping that the rain will be enough, will be enough so that we're not sliding towards the barriers and finding ourselves out of the race when we, once we hit turn one. And as we drive into turn one, the rain has actually come to the point where it's just enough so the Inters will be able to function properly under the conditions. So that will mean that everyone else will be coming in for their stops now. And as you can see, there is the crucial message. Mick Schumacher is coming into the pit lane. So we're going to go down the home straight. We're going to make up some places going down to turn one. And there goes Schumacher back behind us. And the gamble has paid off as we are now in front of our teammate and on course to beat our objective. We managed to find a way past Latifi as well. So I think at this point in the race now, it's just down to trying to get as high up in the order as we possibly can. We've got about two and a half laps left to do that. And I'm sure there's some drivers who are yet to come in for their intermediates as we move on towards the end of the lap. Giovinazzi has been held up by Russell, who's still sitting there on the medium. Dude's got a double overtake there, but there goes Giovinazzi up the inside once again. He's going to have the run. We bang tyres, and he's going to have the momentum. Coming off the corner, he's just got the more speed than we do. But regardless, a couple more drivers have pit, and that puts us up into P16, which is where we started. So we could try and have a positive end to this race by going to the inside of Giovinazzi and trying to make that move now, but he's got the edge, and we're lucky to have not been penalised for cutting the corner. But so we're going to keep Latifi and Schumacher behind us regardless. And having Schumacher there behind us is just what we need to complete the objective for this chapter and move on to the next one. Giovinazzi, is going to, which has just managed to elude us, 
Hamilton's won the race and that should give him a big boost to the Drivers' Championship after what happened in Russia. He will come through the final corner though to claim P16 and crucially complete the objective for Chapter 2. Get in! Mercedes have won it, and what a great race it was. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Well, they clearly have a car that comes alive in the kind of conditions we were dealing with today. It's a very balanced package in the wet, and what that means is that the drivers have confidence to attack. And having that confidence gets you on the power earlier, it lets you brake later, and can put you a long way up the road. After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team, and they certainly deserve it. Let's have a quick look at how the driver's standings have changed. Lewis Hamilton takes the lead of the Drivers' Championship. So, Anthony Davidson, who would you rank as your driver of the day? Sebastian Vettel would definitely be my first choice. He showed up a lot of the drivers out on the track today and didn't show any signs of slowing down. Let's move on to the constructors. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. Meanwhile, good work from Aston Martin this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. After an event like that, who knows what the sport has in store for us next time. Be sure to join us again as we continue to bring you the latest excitement in Formula One. An incredible gamble on tyres and the wet weather sees Malachi finish in 16th place and more importantly, ahead of Mick. Whether this will add more fuel to the fire that is the Alpha Tauri rumours remains to be seen.